Welcome to the Minnesota Association for College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair. Thank you very much for joining us this evening. Before we get started with our presentation, just a few quick housekeeping items. Uh, the first is that attendees are welcome and encouraged to ask questions to any of our panelists at any time utilizing the Q&A button. You may ask a question to a specific panelist or you can ask a general question of any and all of the panelists. Also, your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists will not be able to see or hear you. Uh, this is just one of several sessions being held today and tomorrow, so please feel free to sign up for more sessions at the same registration website. And about one week from today, recording of this session will also be available on that registration website. But without further ado, I'd like to go ahead and introduce our first presenter, which will be Arizona State University. Thank you. All right, go ahead and get started. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. I'm super excited to be here to chat with you all about Arizona State University for a few minutes. My name is Nicole Sumrall. I'm the Assistant Director for National Recruitment here at ASU. I specifically work with students from the state of Florida, um, but I am always talking to students from all across the country. Um, something that we always love to share about ASU is our charter. Um, through our charter are our institution's defining values. My favorite piece of the charter is that we measure ourselves not by whom we exclude, but by whom we include and how they succeed. Um, so you'll find later in my presentation when I talk about our admission requirements, um, any student that meets our admission requirements will have access to the university um, and be admissible to ASU. Um, another unique feature of ASU is we are one university in many places. ASU is the only research extensive university located in the Phoenix metropolitan area. Phoenix is the fifth largest city in the country. So we have to cater to all sorts of people across um, the state of Arizona. So we have four campuses across the Phoenix Metro. We do have an inter-campus shuttle that does um, run between all locations at ASU. So you, if you have classes on multiple campuses, you can take the shuttle, um, but you do not have to have a multi-campus experience at ASU if you do not want to have a multi-campus experience. Um, your major will determine your campus at the university. Um, so every major does have a home campus and every campus has every single thing that you need in order to be successful at ASU. So residential hall, library, um, dining facilities, it's a self-sustaining campus essentially. So you have everything you need on each location. Uh, quickly talk a little bit about the locations. Our downtown Phoenix campus is our medium-sized campus. Um, there's around 12,000 undergraduate students that will study on the downtown Phoenix campus every year. Some main programs there are our journalism program, our public service, um, community service programs. Um, we also have our nursing and health solutions. Basically anything you need to run a city is going to be located in the heart of the city. So you're um, steps away from internships and job opportunities. Polytechnic campus is in East Mesa. It's on an old Air Force base. So we have our very own aviation program. Um, so if you're interested in flight, aviation, air traffic management, we have full programs for that. Polytechnic campus is about 5,000 undergraduate students. Uh, on the Tempe campus, this is our large, uh, largest campus, our most historic campus at the university. So you um, will see a majority of our programs here, engineering, business. We have our College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, our Teachers College, our um, Herberger Institute for Design and the Arts. So a lot of main programs on the Tempe campus. Um, and around 50,000 students study on the Tempe campus every year. And then lastly, we have the West Campus, which is in Glendale, Arizona. West Campus is around 4,500 4, students. Um, our most unique program out there is our forensics program. Um, but it is a beautiful, our small liberal arts college. So if you're a student who wants a smaller college with large university resources, um, the West Campus would be a great place to look. We have over 350 undergraduate degree programs at ASU. So if you are debating between a few programs um, or not quite sure what you're wanting to study um, yet in college, um, we definitely have a lot of different things to choose from at the university. I do highly recommend this website. Um, you can compare and contrast different programs at the university. 
And it's just a really great way to see what kind of um, classes you'd be taking with any degree plan at ASU. So asu.edu slash degrees will be a really helpful tool for you um, to explore our 350 degree plans. So yes, ASU is large. We are one of the largest public universities in the country. Uh, we take pride in that. Uh, we do make sure we have resources for students to bring that larger community of ASU into smaller communities. One of the main ways we do that is our residential living communities. Um, at ASU, you live with other students in your same academic college. So if you are a business student, you will be housed with other business students at the university. Um, if same with engineering, um, journalism, et cetera just so you have the best resource possible, which is your peer who's going through the same exact classes as you are. We also have over a thousand student clubs and organizations to help customize your experience at ASU and just a multitude of things to get involved in um, and stay connected with while you're at ASU. Also, if you are a student who is interested in an honors experience, um, ASU has Barrett the Honors College, which is the gold standard of honors colleges in the country. We have a, about 7,000 undergraduate students that go through our Barrett Honors College every single year. And it's a really amazing tool and resource for students who are wanting to keep that extra rigor while they're in school. Quickly for our admission requirements, um, we, have, we look at students for 16 core classes for admission. So we're looking for four years of math, four years of English, three years of lab science, two years of social science, two years of foreign language, and one year of fine arts. Once you meet those, we're looking for either a 3.0 GPA in those 16 core classes, and then either a test score or, um, to, um, sorry, <laughs> class rank, but we do not require test scores if you are meeting that 3.0 GPA requirement. And um, so we are test optional for admission purposes. And then lastly, as I wrap up here, um, we do review all students for merit-based scholarships uh, upon admission to ASU. So, for out-of-state students, those range anywhere from 7,500 up to 15,500, and you will automatically be considered for those. You don't have to submit an extra application or anything like that. So please let me know if you have any questions in the Q&A. I will be happy to answer those. Thank you very much, Arizona State. Uh, our next presenter this evening is Bethel University. All right, thank you so much, Chris. I appreciate it. Um, well, welcome guys, I'm really excited to be here with you. Uh, my name is Kyle Peach, I'm an admissions counselor uh, for Bethel University. We are located in St. Paul, Minnesota. Um, I typically work with students from the West Coast, the Pacific Northwest and the Southwest Territory, um, as well as a few different counties um, around the Metro Twin Cities area um, in Minnesota. Um, and a fun fact about me, I am, I am originally from Arizona. Both my parents are ASU alums, so um, grew up going to Sun Devils game. So Nicole, I'll give you that. Uh, but a little bit about Bethel. Uh, like I said before, we are a private Christian college. Uh, we focus on a liberal arts education, right? So for those of you that don't know uh, what a liberal arts education really means is that we believe in a, a holistic and a whole rounded, well-rounded education for students. You can, We believe you can go anywhere and you can study business, you can study pre-med, pre-law anywhere for four years and get really, really good at that. But we also believe that your educational ceiling is so much higher than just that. So we throw in um, a lot of different general education courses for students to take in their four years here at Bethel. We believe that that makes them an overall better student and a better, all, better overall uh, candidate for employers in the future. So we're about 10 minutes away from the downtown St. Paul and Minneapolis area. We offer over 100 different majors uh, for our students going from the sciences, like from pre-med, biokinetics, kinesiology, all the way to biblical and theological studies, uh, BTS. We have 18 NCAA uh, varsity sports here on campus. Um, our total en enrollment is about 4,500, including undergrad, graduate school, adult programs, and seminary. And 2,500 of those students are residential here on campus. Um, most of our students live here on campus. Over 90% of our students live on campus all four years. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the residential side and the community and why students really do choose Bethel. Uh, we get students from almost all 50 states um, and we have a few pockets of international students as well that come to the Twin Cities. So academics, we have something for everyone. Uh, some of our top academic areas are business economics, physics and engineering, uh, nursing, the health sciences, so biology, chemistry, healthcare, 
um, and education as well. So we really pride ourselves on our small class sizes. Most students have a class size anywhere between 16 to 18 students while they're here, and that number only goes lower um, in their senior and in their junior years. But we, have, we really pride ourselves too on our study abroad program. Um, over 70% of our students study abroad at least once in their four years here at Bethel University. There's a few different reasons for that. The number one reason is it's affordable. We, we've made it affordable for our students. It's typically a cheaper option for students to go study abroad for a semester than it is here to be on campus. And that brings up a lot of questions of like, well, why wouldn't I just study abroad for all four years? <laughs> and we, we would love for that to be an opportunity for some students, but we, we love to keep students here on campus and they love to be here too. But it is a really, really great opportunity for students to see a different part of the world for a semester or for a three week period during our interim or a J term um, as well. So 99% of Bethel grads are also in a higher form of education or they are already in a job related in their field after six months post-graduation at Bethel. So talking about a spiritual life, uh, we, we are a Christ-centered environment. Uh, we, we believe in that really strongly and that from students of all different denominations and beliefs can come together to live in an incredible Christ-centered environment here on campus. Uh, we really believe and focus on making sure that students know that your faith is not going to be forced upon you in this environment. We really believe it's an opportunity for students to grow both intellectually when they come to college, but also spiritually um, in other ways as well, like emotionally. So chapel is here on campus. It's an awesome opportunity for students to grow, hear from campus pastors, hear from incredible Christian leaders from around the country, from around the world. Chapel is three times a week, Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, but chapel is not required. We make it very evident that chapel is not required because we don't want it to seem like Bethel is a church. We, we hope that Bethel is temporary for you, that at the most you spend four years, hopefully less, right, at this place, but it's an incredible place for you to grow um, in your faith. So we have multiple opportunities for Bible studies um, and other gatherings for students to also grow spiritually too. Shift is another opportunity for students to get together with the guys or girls on their freshman floor to meet with their RA and their shift leaders for a Bible study once a week. So students are automatically enrolled in it and have an incredible community and a culture um, as soon as they step foot on campus. Vespers is another opportunity we like to talk about. So it's our, our hour-long worship service on Sunday nights. So all of our worship on campus is student-led. If you're a student interested in music and you like performing, um, you do not have to be a music major. We invite students of, of all majors to perform here on campus. There are auditions in the springtime at Bethel. Um, that is held on Sunday nights, and it's a huge part of the Bethel culture and the surrounding community around Bethel, too. So why Bethel? Why do students choose to come uh, to Bethel University in St. Paul, Minnesota? It's because of the community. You know, we, it, I think nine out of 10 students say that they chose Bethel because of the incredible, incredible community that they got here at Bethel, um, the people that they surrounded themselves with in this Christ-centered environment, their peers, their professors, uh, their coaches, their mentors, their leaders, their tutors, every single person that touches their life, even out of the student life office too, uh, is really pouring into them and, and it's meaningful. We believe in being the salt and the light of the world and being, being this light to the rest of the world too, which we believe there, there's so much darkness around, but we can really send our students off into the workforce after graduation um, to carry on what they've learned at Bethel. Last slide, I would encourage you to come visit. So we have been open all year long, 100%. Um, we have not gone online at all. We have handled COVID extremely well and down to a minimum. Um, so we've been able to have students in person and in-person classes as well. If you're looking for a school to come visit, uh, come check us out. You can visit Bethel.edu to check out some visits, both in person and virtual. Thank you guys so much. Appreciate it. Thank you very much, Bethel University. Um, our next presenter this evening is Bradley University. Awesome. Well, thank you, Christopher, and thank you so much, uh, everyone, for joining us this evening. My name is Nolan Ruthie. I'm one of the admission counselors at Bradley University, and I work with all students from Minnesota, so I'm your admission counselor uh, here at Bradley. Um, and to, to kind of paint a picture to start, Bradley's a, a mid-sized university, mid-sized private school located in Peoria, Illinois. If you drew a big circle around us in a three-hour radius, you would catch Chicago, St. Louis, uh, in Indianapolis. We're nice and centrally located between those three major cities, and we are the largest metropolitan area south of Chicago. So uh, uh, Peoria and the surrounding area is about a, a metropolitan area of 300,000 people. So 
Um, a lot of great opportunities pass through Peoria. Um, we've got a lot of great opportunities in Peoria. Whether you're looking for more of the city life, we've got a thriving downtown scene, or if you're someone that's looking for more of the rural scene, you drive 10 minutes in the opposite direction and you are in, you know, your more antique rural residential areas. So if you're looking to find something similar to home or something different from home, we likely have an area for you. Much like Peoria is kind of the perfect combination of um, uh, residential and city feel, Bradley's a really great combination of college feel as well. Being just under 6,000 students with about 1,000 of those being graduate students, um, we are right at a mid-sized university. So we have your resources, your opportunities, your lab space, uh, your faculty namesake of your large schools, but your small scale one-on-one -on -one attention um, offered at your small schools. We've got uh, over 185 academic programs, direct entry academic programs that you can choose to study from, broken down into five colleges. And our size puts us right at a 12 to one student to faculty ratio with an average class size of 17 students. Um, so we don't have any big lecture halls. You don't swim in a sea of people, only see that professor once a week um, and then never see them again outside of that. The other nice thing is all of our classes are 100% faculty taught. So you're going to be learning directly from people um, with their PhDs or people who have published research, people who are still active in their fields. You're going to get to learn from them in a class of maybe 15 people. Our five colleges consist of our Foster College of Business, which is a top 50 school of business, our Slane College of Communication and Fine Arts, our College of Education and Health Sciences, our Caterpillar College of Engineering and Technology, which is a top 30 school for engineering, and our College of Liberal Arts and Sciences. We've also got some really great programs like in our College of Communication and Fine Arts, we're a top 15 school for game design animation, interactive media. We've got a really great direct entry nursing program that's super popular. Um, we've got really great teacher education programs um, and just, just so many other things to offer. And the beauty is our, all of our programs are direct admit. So you'll know day one uh, when you step foot on campus that you are that major and you'll be taking classes in that major from the beginning. In addition to our five colleges, we have our academic exploration program, which is for any student who doesn't quite know what they wanna do yet. You'll receive an academic advisor here, just like you would any other major, uh, but these academic advisors have kind of a general idea of all the majors. So they'll really help you be able to pair your interests with uh, a major after that. So our campus is very uh, small. You don't have to take a bus, like 30 minutes between classes, anything like that. Um, you'll notice a parking deck on one side of campus and a parking deck on the other. You could walk between those two parking decks in 10 minutes if you really needed to. And about 90% of our first year students do live on campus. So there's always a lot going on. It doesn't clear out on the weekends or anything like that. There's always a lot to do on campus. Outside of academics, of course, because you'll be spending plenty of time outside the classroom, uh, we've got over 240 clubs and organizations consisting of Greek life, uh, you know, club intramural sports, different music opportunities, different uh, service philanthropy opportunities. So a lot of opportunities to get involved outside the classroom as well. Applications are still open. We're still accepting applications. We are on the Common App. Um, and then applications for those that are not seniors open up July 1st going into your senior year. So some things we'll need with the application. Of course, in addition to the application, you're only required to write one essay. Um, and then we'll need an official copy of your transcript as well. We are a test optional school, so totally up to you if you want to submit your SAT or ACT scores. It's not going to hinder you for admission or scholarships if you do not submit scores. We are open for uh, visits now as well. Um, we've, we've opened up back in October. We've been open in person this whole time. We've had students on campus in classes um, the whole time. So uh, we are offering curbside visits now where you can pull up. We will give you a tour. You'll be able to see most of our academic buildings as well as meet with an admission counselor and even a faculty member. Um, and in, in addition to that, we've got a lot of other visit programs going on right now. We have a couple of what we're calling under the stars visits coming up where we will take over our quad. We'll have socially distant option for you and your family to sit, see your presentations um, on some big projectors and then get a tour of campus as well. And then outside of that, we've got a ton of virtual sessions happening right now about all of our academic programs are hosting virtual sessions throughout this semester as well. So definitely feel free to uh, tune into one of those. You can find that at the following link. I'll make sure to post that in the chat as well. Uh, but a lot of great opportunities to visit campus as well if you're able to make the trip down.
We do have an international airport also located in Peoria um, that does have direct flights to the Minneapolis St. Paul Airport. Um, that does make home a little bit closer. It does make access to campus a little bit more convenient. So um, whether you drive or fly, there are options for both. And the airport is about 10, 15 minutes from campus. So um, really great opportunities for that as well. So I'll be in the chat, of course, as the rest of my colleagues, um, but there's my contact information. Thank you guys so much. Thank you very much, Bradley. Um, just a reminder, uh, as we move to the second half of our presenters, uh, for any of our late attendees, you are welcome and encouraged to ask questions to any of the panelists at any time, utilizing that Q&A feature. Uh, but up next is Hofstra University. Hello, everybody. My name is Joseph Maroney. I'm a senior assistant dean of admissions here at Hofstra. I do, in fact, also have a Minnesota as my territory. So you, if you haven't already been getting some emails from me, you definitely will be. Um, we're going to talk about Hofstra, but just so if you want to reference this at any point in the future, I would definitely check out the link hofstra.edu slash discover you. So Hofstra University, although we are located in New York, we actually are on Long Island. So we can do very much deliver on your typical college experience with you know, quads, uh, athletic games. We have 21 division one athletics uh, teams on campus. But we also do in fact give you the typical experience that you're looking for with the suburban setting since we are a suburban university. Our average class size at Hofstra is 21 students and our student faculty ratio is 13 to one. What this means for you is you have resources available, you, available to you, not only inside the classroom, but outside the classroom as well. And to us, that's very important since we are a medium private school uh, on Long Island. We also wanna make sure that our students are getting a really well-rounded experience. So we are a liberal arts school, meaning that even if you do have a major declared, you do have the opportunity to take classes that are outside of your major, giving you that well-rounded experience to really stand out in an interview in the future. We do have 165 undergraduate programs. And my favorite thing about Hofstra is when you're applying to the university, you're applying to the university, not our Zarb School of Business, our Lawrence Herbert School of Communication, our Calico School of Public Policy. You're applying to Hofstra. And once you declare your major, that'll officially place you into that school. So if you're undecided, we are very friendly. If you wanna change your mind a few times, you absolutely can do that as well. We could actually have students declare a major by the end of their sophomore year and still graduate within four years. What does a student population look like? Well, as you can see under your screen, we have just under 7,000 undergraduate students. We do in fact have almost a 50-50 ratio of male and female. So you get a really nice co-ed experience. Although we are located in Long Island, New York, we do actually have over half of our students come from out of state. So it's not like it's just gonna be all New Yorkers all the time. You will have fellow Minnesotans, as well as people coming from the West Coast, the South, and we actually have 70 countries represented. So you can get a very international experience just by sitting in one of the classrooms at Hofstra. We also have our campus divided in half. So one side of campus, what you're viewing right now is actually our academic side. Everything on this side of the university is dedicated to that degree that you're after. So it's your classrooms, your professor's offices, your advisors, whether it be your career center advisor, financial aid advisor, or my favorite advisor, our Center for Academic Excellence. They'll help you with the transition into college, but also make sure that you really know how to organize yourself, manage your time, and really max on the Hofstra experience. The other side of campus is what we call our residential side, because as you could assume, we do in fact have all of our residential halls on that side of campus in addition to almost all of our 21 division sports athletic fields. On that side of campus is our largest dining complex, which is open 24 hours. We also do in fact have our fitness center, our wellness center and our counseling center. And all that is unlimited for students and free. Like I mentioned earlier, we do have 165 programs, but you can branch out of your school. So let's just say you are majoring in management. You could minor in music and minor in political science if that's something that interests you and you want to kind of bring those points of interest together for your career path down the line. No one from Hofstra is graduating with the same exact resume transcript or anything like that because you actually can start your liberal arts classes as well as your major classes your very first semester. So it's not two years of prereqs and then two years of major courses. By distributing all those classes throughout your four years, you really can discover what is your passion, what really want to make, make as your career 
but more importantly, you're creating the path that works best for you because no uh, job position is really gonna be specific to one student, but you are able to kind of customize it to your abilities and your strengths. And obviously, like I mentioned, your interests. Outside of the classroom, we definitely deliver on the college experience. We actually have over 220 clubs and organizations. Some of them are based off of academic interests. Some are based off of uh, ethnicity, uh, identifiers like your religion. Uh, in addition to first generation college students, we have organizations dedicated just to that. We do have Greek life available, both social as well as pre-professional. We also do have club sports, intramural sports, clubs that have nothing to do with academics or athletics, such as our coloring club, our, and our most popular club sport at Hofstra is actually Quidditch. We do have, like I mentioned, 21 Division I sports. Our students are involved with 100,000 hour, 100, hours of community service each year. Housing is guaranteed all four years. Almost all of our students living on campus. It's not required, but we do have a majority of our students living on campus. It gives you that really nice university feel to have that home away from home, but still have that connection with the outside community. Our location is prime, 25 miles away from the city. As you can see, students are getting internships and jobs at uh, large Fortune 500 companies. The beach is 10 minutes away, so you really get the best of both worlds, as cliche as that sentence may be, but you really can maximize with our location, internships, in addition to entertainment. Just so you have some facts and figures in front of you, we are test optional. We have been for five years. It's not a COVID adjustment, so we know exactly how to identify what's going to be a strong student at Hofstra. Uh, those scores that you see are, in fact, our mid-ranges, and that SAT of a 3.7 is weighted on a 4.0 scale. We're an early action school, not early decision. So we're never gonna bind you to our university. These are just some facts I wanna point out. The main thing about Hofstra is we're gonna make sure that you get that career and we're gonna make sure you have that solid foundation. I wanna thank you so much for your time and attention today and hopefully we'll be uh, adding Hofstra to your visits in the future. Great, thank you very much Hofstra. Um, up next will be Loyola University Chicago. Hi everyone, um, just to introduce myself before I pop back out of here again, my name's Adam Buller. I'm one of the senior assistant directors at Loyola University. I'm also a proud graduate of the school. So I grew up in Michigan and I moved to Chicago and I fell in love with the city and the school and I've been there ever since. So I work entirely with students from Minnesota. Um, so if you apply to Loyola, that makes us family. Like my job is to make your life as easy and as straightforward throughout the whole college decision process. But as we kick this off, um, just so I can share my screen and bring this up. So talking about Loyola, we are Chicago's Jesuit University, and that's a really important um, distinction for us. Uh, as a Jesuit school, we believe in holistic education. So there's 27 Jesuit schools in the country, but this idea that college is absolutely there to prepare you for a job and success in your career, but it can also be a time to help you figure out what kind of person you want to be. And so that starts with um, how do we introduce students to new perspectives and ideas and experiences? Um, we are a liberal arts school. So no matter what you're thinking of majoring in, you're gonna take a little bit of everything before you graduate. Um, that extends to Chicago. We have the third largest city in the US as a backdrop. And so like from my own personal experience, I learned as much from my time exploring Chicago as I did from the classes. And then beyond that, we want you to travel. Um, one of three students at Loyola will study abroad by the time that they graduate. And that is just to have a chance where you can live somewhere else and really see and experience a different culture. All this to serve the second big point, which is that we want to focus on social justice. When you leave college, you're going to have an education where you understand how do you help other people? How do you make the world better, both in your job, but in the decisions that you make in your everyday life? Um, so that being said, we are a mid-sized university. We are about 12,000 undergraduate students, 17,000 students overall. I loved this size because then in the class, your average class size is about 26 students. So I was saying hi to my professors as you walk across campus. Um, so many of your important conversations happen in office hours. So it has a smaller school in terms of academic support, but we're division one school for 13 varsity sports, men's basketball team just locked in. Um, our spot in the NCAA tournament. Um, we have 250 different student groups on campus. And about half of our students are coming from somewhere outside of Illinois. 
you can just see these stats. Like we are a really diverse school because Chicago gets to bring in people from all different walks of life too. And that's something we embrace. We want everyone to find their home on campus. So that might be with student organizations or in those different offices promoting that diversity as well. And so where we are in Chicago, we're in the northernmost neighborhood of the city. So this is our main campus. Um, this is, we sit right on Lake Michigan. The Lakeshore campus is where life at Loyola really starts. So this is the only road that runs alongside campus. This is the train line that runs throughout the entire city of Chicago, north and south. Um, but then this is your campus space. And so when you are at Loyola, like when you step on campus, you forget that you're still in the city of 2.7 million people. Like you get to have a very traditional college experience. Um, but at the same time, you walk right across the street, you can jump on the train and you can be downtown Chicago in 25 minutes. We require students to live on campus for the first two years. Um, we then also have space available for students who want to live on campus for junior or senior year, but we do see students that move off campus too. The Lakeshore is going to be where your student life is really located. It's where your core liberal arts requirements are. It's also where the home to the College of Arts and Science, our School of Nursing, our School of Environmental Sustainability, and our School of Health Science and Public Health are located. So if you're thinking those majors, you know, this is going to be the campus that you're taking those classes. On the flip side, we also have the other side of Chicago too, and that's our Water Tower campus, more for classes specifically for business, communication, education, and social work. So you are taking classes that are being taught by professors who work in Chicago. You know, that opens up tons of internship opportunities and networking um, as well. It also means that you can do internships during the school year in the fall or the spring semester. You don't have to wait to the summertime. So you have this huge leg up in opportunity. Um, and then Chicago too. And hopefully this is one of the reasons that you are looking at and considering Loyola. Um, because we want this to be a part of your experience. Every student has unlimited access to the buses and trains. Um, so that's a ticket anywhere you want to go in Chicago. Uh, it also, we start putting on events and uh, do things like, uh, you know, sporting events, theater productions, those things at a discounted rate so that you get to enjoy Chicago on a student budget. Just quickly mentioning this uh, study abroad, like I said, we have one of three students do it. We have 150 programs, but we actually own our own campus in Rome. We run a program in Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam, but we extend far beyond that as well. We want you to travel while you are in college. And then academics. Um, I talked about this a little bit more, but like just talking about that smaller class size, your professors are gonna be that way that you can find research. We're a research school and so our professors rely on undergraduate students to help them with their research opportunities, but they also a lot of times are pointing to students to opportunities in Chicago itself. Um, you can come in starting right in your major, or you can take some time using those general liberal arts requirements to explore what you might be interested in. Um, we are ranked number 49th in the country for undergraduate instruction. It's what we hire for. We want you to have a strong relationship, a mentorship opportunity with your professors. And then lastly, just wrapping up about the application, we are rolling admissions process, which means the earlier that you apply, the earlier that we start to review your application, typically starting in early October. Um, and then uh, we are uh, a, now a, a test optional school. So you can decide whether you think your test scores are a good reflection of your performance and your ability. We do require uh, an application recommendation letter from either a teacher or a counselor or, oh, that is my timer. Um, or then also um, we require official high school transcripts. So if you have any other questions, please put them in the Q&A or feel free to reach out to me at any other point moving forward. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Loyola Chicago. Um, and now we're going to have our final presenter of the evening, University of Jamestown. All right. Hi, guys. Um, my name is Ari. I am an admissions counselor here at the University of Jamestown in Jamestown, North Dakota. So not too far from Minnesota at all. And I am strictly the Minnesota rep. So some of you have probably heard from me already and will keep hearing from me as we kind of go on. But I am going to share this really quick.
All right. So just a little bit. University of Jamestown, we are a private liberal arts school. Uh, we are uh, Presbyterian, founded us in 1883. But we also are a non-affiliated or non-denominational, non-denominational, as we like to say. Uh, we want you to feel comfortable in any religion you might want to practice or feel comfortable doing. Uh, so we have services on Thursdays from 11 to 11.30 that are completely optional to you if you want to go about and do that or um, go throughout the college with clubs and different things. So that's kind of how we are. Some of the Basic facts for us, our total enrollment is about 1,168. So we are very small um, and we have over 40 areas of study. The average class size is about 19 students. Uh, you're going to have professors that know you, professors that are probably coming to your games and just seeing you, knowing what you want to study and helping you get to whatever your degree is. 100% um, of students will receive financial aid. Um, that is, you know, if it's in an area of study scholarships based on GPA and different things like that. We also have over 20 varsity sports. We are a NAI school, so that's a little bit different than NCAA, but still just our type of uh, athletics. Um, some of our most popular majors would be in the health sciences, biology, nursing, and exercise science are very high up there. Nursing is probably what we are known for most. And then other ones that are really high are psychology, criminal justice. Um, we have a, our county um, sheriff's department and everything right here in town, in Jamestown. And then elementary education and business are our other two that are following really closely up to those ones as well. Some of our new ones that are growing is mechanical engineering. We have a brand new mechan mechanical engineering senior seminar lab. Um, so we have a machinist on time and everything like that. They're helping you build different things and do different things and doing it really hands-on. Our environmental science is its first year this year. Um, we are very outdoorsy here in North Dakota. Um, so we were really excited about getting this going and having different trips through our wildlife society up to Churchill, Manitoba and doing some research things and stuff like that. Um, so like I kind of said, our athletics, um, we have 20 varsity sports. Um, we're part of the NAIA and in the GPAC or the Great Plains Athletic Conference. Um, we have everything that, you know, a lot of schools have. We just recently announced um, we are adding women's hockey. Um, so we're super excited about that. Um, we have men's volleyball and next year will be the first year of women's swimming and diving. Uh, we also have competitive esports, so competitive video gaming and competitive shooting sports. So trap shooting, archery and also um, skeet shooting. We like you guys to be involved with our small school, our small size, everything like that. Um, people are doing a diff bunch of different things. We have performing arts with theater, band, choir, um, our service organizations, our honors program, um, and our character and leadership minor. Um, these range all the way from you could be in a club with your nurses, with biology majors, to we have a pie of the month club where kids get together and eat pie because someone thought that would be an awesome idea. And it's one of our new clubs and they were, they're big. They probably have about 50, 60 students in it. So it's really fun to see kids just broaden out and have different things that they enjoy. Um, some new facilities uh, at the top, right? You can see our Harold Newman arena that was um, completed in 2017. And that is home to our men's and women's volleyball team our men's and women's uh, basketball team, and then our men's and women's wrestling. And currently tomorrow, tomorrow and Friday and Saturday, we are hosting the women's national wrestling tournament. So pretty cool experience with that building there. Um, in the bottom left-hand corner, you can see just a kind of a mock-up. Right now our field is completely tore up because we are putting in this brand new turf field. Um, so we, you can kind of see what our Field is going to look like it should be ready by September of 2021. So we're really, really excited. Um, then some other things, like I said, the lab, we have fully stimulated nursing labs. We have two labs of high fidelity mannequins that do breathing sounds. One gives birth with, and then the baby does different sounds, bowel sounds and different things like that to put you in as real place setting as we can. Um, we also just built a brand new dorm. Its first year was this year. Uh, it is 
uh, just like a plaza style and it has a night and day coffee shop that serves Starbucks. And then it also acts as a convenience store for students on campus. Um, so a little bit, everyone's gonna get a scholarship of some way, shape or form, um, depending on your academic GPA scholarships. We are a test flexible school. So you do not have to submit your ACT or SAT. That is completely up to you if you're wanting to. And then we have different programs of study scholarships and then anything you might be a part of. Um, so that's kind of how we work with scholarships and different things. Uh, so a big thing, YUJ. Um, we're very based in our holistic education, caring staff, and we just want you to feel like a family because that's what we are here. Uh, and then if you have any questions or anything like that, um, again, my name's Ari. You can reach out to me, go to the website, and then all of our Facebooks and Twitters, Instagrams will just be uh, future Jimmies, and we're all on that. So I appreciate your time. Thank you so much, and I hope you guys have a good night. Thank you very much, University of Jamestown. Uh, we do have about five minutes remaining. So attendees, if you have any last questions, please feel free to send them through via the Q&A. Uh, while we're waiting to see what questions come through, perhaps I can pose a question to all of you. We can go around and answer it. Uh, perhaps you could share one thing that you did not have time to include in your presentation, whether that's your favorite event or tradition on campus, a fun fact of your university or anything else you'd like to share. We'll go around in the same order, uh, starting with Arizona State. Okay. Thank you. Um, my favorite tradition at ASU is um, what we call whitewashing the A. All first year students um, are encouraged to attend. Um, and basically what you do is you hike up a short mountain, I promise it's not too crazy. Um, and there's a large A that is always painted gold. Each first year student is given a little Dixie cup of white paint to whitewash the A to signify a fresh clean slate to um, your new college career. So that's my favorite tradition at ASU. Great, thank you. Bethel? Yeah, thanks, Chris. Uh, my favorite tradition would probably be homecoming week. It is the most hype week on campus. Um, all week long, we have dodgeball tournaments, we have tug of war. We have art banner competitions, um, and of course, the football game at the end of the week. I myself am also a Bethel alum, as I mentioned. I played on the football team here at Bethel. Um, we have not had a losing season in 24 years here at Bethel for um, NCAA Division III football. So we really pride ourselves on winning, and we haven't had a losing record on our home on our home side of it, um, side of the bracket for I believe 29 years now. So we like to win. We know how to win on the football field. Um, and we ranked fifth in the country two years ago for attendance where we averaged over uh, 7,000 fans at all of our home games. So thank you. It's a lot different than my college experience. I won't tell you what school I went to. Uh, Bradley. Awesome, thank you. One thing that we're really proud of at Bradley is we guarantee all students uh, at least two real world opportunities uh, before they graduate. We call them experiential learning, whether it be internships, capstone projects, um, you know, independent research, um, what it, whatever it may be, we guarantee all students at least two opportunities that you'll be able to have on your resume before you graduate, ready to hand to employers saying, hey, here's what I've already done that you're looking for. Great, thank you. Uh, Loyola? Uh, my favorite tradition at Loyola has to be finals breakfast. So right before the start of finals week, um, every year in both the fall and the spring semester, you show up at like 10 p.m. to 12 a.m. to the basketball arena. And you have faculty and staff serving all the students breakfast as just kind of a way to take a collective breath. But then sometimes you have like the provost that's serving you eggs and like bacon. And it's just a cool way to like, just have like a moment of solidarity with everyone, but also feel connected to the school too. So that was definitely my favorite as a student. Okay, thank you. Uh, Jamestown. So my favorite tradition at Jamestown would definitely be um, when the first snow falls that actually sticks to the ground. Um, the entire admission staff, which is about five or six of us, we send out an email blast and we have a complete snowball, snowball fight in the middle of campus and professors will get the email in the middle of class and students will leave and come join us for about a half an hour. And we just have a students versus staff and faculty snowball fight. So that one's always pretty fun when we get that snow snowfall. It's never on the same day. You never know when it's actually going to stick. So that's what's, that's what's really fun here. 
when it never gets a little dangerous <laughs> <laughs> typically it's the first one so there's not quite yeah. ice yet <laughs> all right uh well i think we are close to our time uh so i want to thank all of our panelists again for joining us and your great presentations uh, before we do wrap up the session, I do have a few quick housekeeping items. Uh, the first is that when you close this window, you will receive a very quick four question survey that we ask that you take a minute and complete. And again, there are other sessions this evening as well as tomorrow. So please feel free to sign up for those. And about one week from today, a recording of this session will be available on that same website. But Thank you again. Um, again, thank you to all of our panelists and students. Uh, good luck in your college search. Have a great night.